happy day. Welcome back to New Age Custom Farming. If you're new here, my name is Emily and we are a custom farming operation located in Wisconsin. And our form of custom farming is custom harvesting forages for dairy farms. And today we're chopping corn. So let's go along with the boys and see what's all happening. Basically a brand new chopper going on, right? Yeah, I was filming last night, yeah. filming last night, trying to get the knives sharp, and we just couldn't get them sharp, so we had to put new ones in, unfortunately. And I picked up like four miles an hour because of it, so I'm pretty happy about that. We're running the FR700. What year is this? Like 2012. 2012. So. It's running really good now, so knock on wood. Well, we, uh, Avery's been chopping all day. I joined him for right now. Mason's chopping. Mason blew up his cutter head. Oh. I'm guessing that's not going to be on film because, uh. Nope. Something, something went through it. I don't know what, but something tore it all up. So he needs a whole new cutter head. So we'll get content of the aftermath of that at some point. Yeah. That's wonderful. I did that to this chopper like four years ago. So. Uh, At least we got one chopper done. Right. Got some juices going on. Means the corn's wet, according to Avery. Don't mean it's too wet, it's just. Wet. Wetter. More wet. More wet. This field really varies in height. Yeah, it's a lower level, lower lying field, so you can get into some spots where it got too wet this spring. For a little explanation of how chopping corn works for people who don't know, so what we do is we come through with a big old chopper like we're in now and I'll get some shots from outside too so that you can see what it looks like. But when it comes to corn, the chopper will go through and it will basically cut or collect the entire stalk of the corn. So from the very bottom all the way up to the top, unlike with combining where you only get the cob and get the kernels. And then it'll go through the chopper and there's knives in there that chop the corn stalk into tiny pieces. Um, and I'll again show you guys once we get out what the tiny pieces look like. And then that will go back to farms that have cattle and it'll get stored then all winter long or all year long for them to feed their cattle. So when it comes to chopping, you're using the entire corn plant, not just the corn kernels. Got anything else to add? There's also a processor in there that mashes all the kernels through like a couple thousandths of an inch it's like real small and they they smash all the kernels so basically it doesn't really need to smash the kernels it just needs to crack them well not even do that it just needs to rub the skin on the kernel and then it'll that makes the cattle be able to digest it better it doesn't even really need to crack it it just needs to scuff it is what i was i've been told but obviously you're a crop guy, if not a cattle guy. Well, I'm a chopper guy, so that kind of matters. And so if you crush it, it's fine too, but it basically just needs to get messed up a little bit. 
But if you have any questions about how chopping works or anything, let us know. Like you can see here, it's taking the entire, all the plants and then sucking them in the middle. So this is the head. It has blades that spin around and cut the plant at the very bottom and then it comes through the middle and then underneath us is where all the cutting and magic happens. Avery's exhaust was sounding a little weird, so we're taking a look at it while we're waiting for trucks. What'd you notice? Nothing. Looks Nothing. fine. Yep. Get my sandwich open. Please. Do you hear this? Where are your manners? I said please. It took you a while. You're one lucky guy. One lucky guy. So for collectors, for in this field, we have four guys on, right? Yep. Four, we have two trucks, so that's a straight truck there, straight truck here, and then two Meyer boxes on tractors. Yep. So we're splitting the field right now, meaning there's not like an open side on either side of us. So normally the tractor, the collector drives alongside the chopper, but since you're splitting it, they have to drive behind us. And this new box, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about when you can actually see it too next to us. But this new box that we're demoing right now from Meyer has a flipper on the front. So you see the grates kind of on the side and it'll flip down so making it when you're opening up the field that you can shoot into the box a lot better our the Meyer boxes we own have a a one that's on a lever outside the box you can still see on some of them that you can uh manually get out and do it but it's only about this tall that flips down this one is like probably a foot and a half that goes down and that makes it a lot easier so I can actually see the tail tailgate of the wagon right now and I can I, I can be confident that I'm not shooting it over the back of the wagon because I'm looking in this mirror right here let me show you what I'm looking at you're gonna have to move your head that's what I'm looking at through that mirror right there and I can see it in that mirror and these over here but I'm I'm confident that I'm not shooting it out the back otherwise I can I barely shoot it over the front of it to make sure it's not going out the back and then it's hard to get them full and then you can't make it as far in a split if the back isn't full but if, you know it's hard to know if you're shooting over the back where this makes it really easy to see it you know you're not shooting it too far and this flipper he can control from the inside yeah this one's on a hy hydraulic cylinder that's a wash out <laughs> that, on a hydraulic cylinder that he can control from the tractor. So that's nice. Miss the action? I missed it. See how the front of it's closed? The black thing on the front of the box is what we're talking about. We'll get a video maybe when we're outside of it so you can actually see it better in action. Yeah, we can do a little walk around sometime when we're not chopping. Yeah. Don't forget this. There, you can see the cylinder right there on the front of the wagon. See it there? Yep. That whole front thing flips down. And, and with the manual one, like it's fine, but the guys just end up leaving it down because they don't want to get in and out all the time and flip it up and down so it's the hydraulic is definitely nice but we've always said that there should just be a hydraulic cylinder on it because it wouldn't be that hard to do so and they did it so that's really nice hey ray's gotta fill up some new inoculant are you just so happy So 
the inoculant goes in up there and that's what gets it into the machine in the corn. Minus what an inoculator does. Inoculate. Inoculate. And the inoculator. Yeah. It, I should just give you a jug and you can read it and then you can explain it to people. I don't know. It's just, it's a preservative. So what I was explained is it, it's basically little bugs that eat oxygen out of the feed. So it preserves the, so it helps it ferment and stay, stay more good or as Mason would say. <laughs> that sounds like Mason. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah. It helps, it helps keep the feed from spoiling, basically. We use these grates on our straight trucks for doing hay, or haylage and corn silage because we're able to fill them up higher. And then once we get into shelling corn, we use the straight trucks also for that, but the grates come off the side. The racks. All the racks. Grates, racks, same difference. Bet you people would not like know what I'm talking about when I yeah, call it that. Not saying they would. Look at the difference in height and the same. You can see on this older box what we were well the mirror is kind of in the way down there you go. But we we're talking about the flip how it's flipped down and it's just controlled on the outside. You can kind of see it in the front. Uh, I had one of my, for the auto, there's an auto lube, auto grease system in here that just every five minutes pumps a little bit of grease into everything. And the, like the main feed line for that was leaking a little bit of grease out of it. So it was just loose. So we just tightened it up. But that's a pretty important thing. If you run for an hour without that, it'll take the bearings out of the processor and then that's junk so you got to make sure it's greasing every five minutes it's pretty important so so like i mentioned in a previous video is we are working with our local meyer dealer and then meyer as a whole i guess uh they offered us this fat boy i like the name of it the hux that we are using so like i said right now we're running two meyer boxes and two trucks but we at our farm always have meyer boxes for our collectors it brought us this collector to use for our corn silage um it's wider than our boxes that we have had and shorter an avery i don't think it, it's height wise it's the same but it's not as long length it's length okay. it's four They're feet short like length wise shorter not height wise shorter is yeah. what i mean yeah it's uh the wider is definitely nice for filling because you don't worry about washing the uh, corn silage over the other side so much uh, you know just being that much wider really helps the ease of filling it without spilling anything and then also being shorter it's not quite as far to shoot it back as far and you're hauling the same load granted if it was a 30 footer we would be hauling more and that i'd be okay with that too but it's pretty nice and then actually the tailgate on it i haven't even got to run it yet but the tailgate on it holds like straight back so it cleans out a lot faster is what i've been told so it, it runs out it unloads faster and part of the reason it unloads faster too is because it's shorter you know the chain doesn't have to go around as many times to get it all the way to the back of the box and the stuff from the stuff from the front all the way to the back so that's part of the reason it unloads a little faster than our, ours but it's definitely a nice piece of equipment that's for sure and really nice of them to let us use this one so i guess if you guys are interested this box is for sale so i suppose if you went and bought it then we, we, we would have, have to, to give it, it up <laughs> yeah we'd have to send it back but that'd be fine they'll I'm sure we can work with them on another one so it's uh it's been a good machine though so far i mean obviously everything new is nice but it's definitely nice to have and then 
one other thing we didn't talk about is it's got ours have them too you gotta pay attention to what I'm doing here I can go a lot faster than I am but uh, it's got brakes it's got hydraulic brakes and we've got it connected in the back of the tractor so when you hit the when you hit the brake pedal that's when it applies the brakes for the wagon instead of on a on a remote switch like you would unload but it's also got a hydraulic suspension and set of leaf springs so there's a little control box in the cab and you can you kind of set the suspension on the first load and then I guess it's pretty much good is what I was told but yep but this is a perspective as a chopper driver dumping into it and like we said we've used Meyer boxes for a long time always use Meyer boxes um, here at our farm Oh, it's willful. He's gonna be. That's all. The other nice thing is, with it being wider, you can stack the corn silage a little bit taller. I don't think I'm gonna make it to the end, though. No. That is one full load. That his gross weight is probably close to 100,000 pounds. They've got a scale at the farm. I'd be curious to see what it, see is. What it is. I should tell them this go across the scale. A little. Just out of curiosity, Kelvin, why don't you go across the scale? Let me know what you weigh. Ten more. Oh, he's turning into such a little trucker. <laughs> he does a good job listening skills are superior on that one so that's good <laughs> sometimes the kids go yeah 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 and then you go what did you just say or what did i just say to you and they go uh so, so yeah 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 you didn't listen you need to remember that too sometimes Paco. i do i'm not perfect i'm not saying i am <laughs> I can, some days i know my dad's frustration <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Calvin just reported back to us. He officially got a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred thousand pounds on that load. Granted, that's the full like tractor weight, his weight. His, yep, his gross vehicle weight. He's gonna let us know what his empty weight is, and then we'll know how many tons it holds, depending on moisture and how much grain is. You wouldn't be, you'd be surprised if the yield, like the grain yield, is better. It weighs a lot more because corn is. Heavier. A lot heavier than the plant itself, so you know that can make a big, pretty big difference on the weight too, which is you know it kind of surprised you, like you wouldn't really think about it, but. He's cleaning his window off back there.
left Avery out chopping and I'm here back at the farm. We're gonna check on my calves and then they'll keep chip chop chopping away this evening. It's four right now, so I'm not sure how late they'll go. Um, some of the guys that we have drive for us are wanting to go home usually. <laughs> not They don't wanna stay out too late, which I don't blame them, so. We'll see if he gets some of the younger guys out there and they'll drive later. Um, like the high school kids and stuff, they'll stay a little bit later and everything, but let's check on the calves. I'm giving electrolytes to a calf, but I'm a little distracted because look at who came out to say hi. It's all the little kittens. Hey, yo, babies. Oh, are you scared? Hi, mama. Get done in. What are you doing? Right now the mixer is cleaning itself, so I have to wait for it to finish cleaning to actually be able to push up the calves. But what I do on weekdays, so weekend mornings is when I come and I push up all of the new calves, make sure they're all used to the robot, and know how to drink out of it and stuff. And then on weekday nights typically or later in the day, I'll come in and check on them because my hope is that they have it figured out on how to drink out of the robot, but if they don't, then I'll come and push them up. And then I'm also checking on um, any of the other ones to see if they're drinking and stuff. Are you going to two of a calf for me? There's one in here that looks really unwell, but it's not a during, so I don't know. 